AT&T has been all over the news lately following their announcement to spin off the Warner Media business to merge with Discovery. Well, for the past year, Chris and I have actually been building a long position in AT&T that has allowed us to earn 56% all while the stock price has actually gone down since our first trade. Are you curious as to how we did this? Well, if so, you are in the right place because in today's video, I'm going to tell you exactly what we did and share our reasoning as to why we decided to invest in AT&T. So stay tuned and we'll dive in. Hi everyone, I am Sam. Thank you so much for tuning into our channel where we explore achieving wealth and financial freedom through a three-part strategy. Earn more, spend less, and invest the rest. If you like this video, we would be very grateful if you would subscribe to our channel. Value investors know that often we are investing in companies whose value is not currently being recognized. And sometimes that value recognition can take months or even years to come to fruition. As Benjamin Graham said, in the short run, the market is a voting machine. In the long run, a weighing machine. This time gives us the opportunity to use all the tools that we have in our investors tool belt to build positions with better risk reward profiles. AT&T is actually a unique investment for Chris and I because it is not an ideal one. For us, an ideal investment is a business that we understand, has huge advantages over its competitors, has capable management, and is a business that we can buy at a substantial discount to its intrinsic value. As you will see throughout this video, AT&T does not meet all of our criteria for an ideal investment. However, using the types of trades that I am going to describe to you, we were able to mitigate our risk enough to feel confident in our investment. As you all know, market conditions have a huge impact on a value investor strategy. More to the point, when the market is irrationally high, like we believe it is now, it is incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to find wonderful companies that are trading at a discount to their intrinsic value. At times like these, if you want to invest, you've gotta get a little creative and use the tools that you have at your disposal in order to mitigate your risk and feel comfortable trading in less than ideal situations. And that's what this video is all about. With AT&T, there are several concerns, including poor capital allocation, mountains of debt, and strong competition. However, through the example that I'm going to share with you today, I will tell you about how we lowered our cost basis in order to mitigate the threats of these concerns and purchase shares of AT&T at what we believe is a discount to its intrinsic value. Full disclaimer, we are not recommending purchasing AT&T, but rather this video is intended as a case study where we can show you an example practically of how we have used trading tools. And we hope that by sharing this example, it can help you and give you some useful information for your own investing strategy. Here's what you can expect in today's video. First, we are going to walk you through the actual trades that we made to build our position in AT&T. Then we are going to explain our investment thesis. And finally, we will discuss the recent breaking news regarding the spinoff and how this impacts our long-term outlook. So let's begin. Before I start sharing my screen, it's important for you to know that our financial decisions are guided by the principles of value investing. So this means that we are always looking to buy companies that are trading at what we consider to be a discount to their intrinsic value. The trades that I'm about to show you helped us reduce our cost basis, create cash flow, and mitigate risk, all while building a long term position in what we feel is a very overpriced market. All right, let's get into the trades. In order to keep track of our portfolio, Chris and I like to make spreadsheets for all of our investments so that we have a quick way to track our activities and know exactly how our investments are performing at any given time. The one that I'm showing you here is our AT&T trades summary table. As we walk through these trades, you are going to hear me talk about selling puts and calls, which is a technique we frequently use when taking a long-term position in a company. It's important for you to know that we only sell cash secured puts, which means that we have the money in our account and are willing to buy the stock at the strike price. So this is an investment strategy, not a trading strategy. We started our position on April 6th of 2020. 
we sold four contracts. Now remember that one contract represents 100 shares. So four contracts obligates us to buy 400 shares if the market price is below our strike price on the expiration date. The letter T that you can see here stands for AT&T because T is the company's ticker symbol. The expiration date is April 17th of 2020. The strike price is 26 and we were paid a premium of 26 cents per share. So in total, this trade resulted in us being paid $104. We didn't own any shares at this point. And on this day, AT&T shares were trading at $29.44. If you're feeling a bit lost, don't worry. We did another video that goes into more details about this strategy, which I will link in the description below. Okay, back to our table. You can see that we continued to sell put contracts for the next five months. We had not been put any shares, but all the while we were collecting premiums, which by September 18th had totaled to $1,504. Then on September 21st, our strike price was in the money, so we were put 800 shares at $29 per share. The same day, we sold a call option, which paid us a premium of $232. For about the next month, we owned 800 shares and continued to sell put and call options in order to collect premiums and lower our cost basis. This brings us to October 19th, when we were put another 800 shares at $28 per share. At this point, we owned 1,600 shares, which we spent a little more than $43,000 to acquire. On November 2nd, we received our first dividend payment of $832, and we continued to sell puts and calls. Then on November 30th, our call option expired in the money, and we had to sell all 1,600 of our shares at $28.50 per share. I want to take a quick aside here to point out that this is one of the potential risks of this strategy. You can lose your entire position. You can see here that because of the premiums we collected, we were up nearly $4,000. We could have stopped here and gone home with a win, but at this time, AT&T was trading at $29.54 per share, only a 10 cent difference from when we started this operation back in April. So we felt like there was still an opportunity to go back in and apply the same strategy to rebuild our position. We sold put options until on January 4th, we were put 1,000 shares at $29 per share. What's cool is that here you can really start to see the benefits of this strategy because our adjusted cost basis per share was down to $23.99. From here, we continued to sell covered calls and cash secured puts in order to collect those premiums and further reduce our cost basis. Which brings us to our most recent trade on July 1st of 2021 where we own 1,000 shares of AT&T at an adjusted cost basis per share of $18.48. Not bad when you consider that the current share price is just over $29. In summary, the amount of initial capital we have invested is $18,484. We currently own 1,000 shares of AT&T, and because of our reduced cost basis, we have invested $18.48 per share. At the time I'm recording this video, AT&T is trading at $28.90. So if we were to sell all of our shares today, we would make a profit of 56% on this investment. All right, you have seen what we did. Now it is time to discuss why we did it. So for the next section of this video, I am going to describe to you our personal investment thesis, or in other words, the story of the company and why we have decided to invest our hard earned money into it. With any investment, we always ask ourselves four key questions. Do we understand the investment? Does the investment have a strong, durable, competitive advantage? Is there capable management with integrity in place? And most importantly, can we value the investment and buy it at a discount to that value? So let's break it down. AT&T is the world's largest telecommunication company. It evolved from Bell Telephone Company founded by Alexander Graham Bell himself in 1877. AT&T is a polarizing stock. Most people either love it or hate it. And this is evident anytime you read the comments section of any article written about AT&T. 
It is a dividend aristocrat, which means that it has increased its dividend every year for the past 25 years. In AT&T's case, it is 36 years in fact. And this puts it in the portfolios of a lot of fixed income dividend investors and dividend ETFs. It is the definition of a conglomerate with their hands in many pies, including telecommunications, media, and technology. Poor capital allocation, over-diversification, and other management mistakes have led to its stock price to stagnate and fall short of meeting overall market returns over the last two decades. The purchase of DirecTV in 2015 for $67 billion and the purchase of Time Warner in 2016 for $100 billion are good examples of some of the moves that the management team has made over the past decade that has led to many investors questioning their effectiveness. When we're asking ourselves, do we understand the investment? What we're really asking is, do we understand how and why the investment makes money? And moreover, do we understand it well enough to be able to recognize that if something happens to change our investment thesis, will we be able to see this quickly enough in order to mitigate the damage that this change could cause to the value of that investment? So let's talk making money. AT&T's business is divided to three primary revenue streams, telecommunications, media, and Latin America. U.S. telecommunications services and media make up the lion's share of AT&T's revenue, so let's start there. Like many of you, Chris and I have at one point or another had a cell phone account with AT&T, and although we have some of those average gripes that most people have, overall AT&T has provided good service on par with its competitors. Which brings me something else that's really important we understand, the competition. AT&T has two main competitors in the US market, Verizon and T-Mobile. This brings me to AT&T's media division. Warner Media has some very popular content, including HBO hit television shows, the DC Universe, and Harry Potter. This is all content that we not only enjoy watching, but has also provided us with ideas for our next 10 years worth of Halloween costumes. Their main competitors include Disney, Viacom CBS, Netflix, Apple, and Amazon. Latin America is the segment that we are least familiar with, but we're okay with that because this segment only makes up about 3% of the company's revenue. As a quick overview, they provide wireless services and technology throughout Mexico and entertainment services throughout South America and the Caribbean. Does the investment have strong, durable, competitive advantages? When we look at their telecommunications business, we cannot overlook their sheer size. The infrastructure that is required to run this type of business is immense, and AT&T has the ability to spread these costs over a large customer base through economies of scale. The amount of capital expenditures required to operate this kind of business is a significant barrier of entry, and the only competitor to truly rival this is Verizon. Looking at their media business, the competitive advantage stems from their huge library of content. Is there capable management with integrity in place? This was a tough question for us because honestly, we had to say no to this one when we were doing our research. Our primary criteria for evaluating the capability of management is their capital allocation and their ability to reduce debt burden. The recent history of AT&T is fraught with bad capital allocation, including the purchase of DirecTV and Time Warner, which added up to a pile of debt nearing $159 billion. To put that into context, if AT&T were a country, it would rank 40th in the world for highest debt between Colombia and Denmark. Can we value the investment and buy it at a discount to that value? Ultimately, this is the most important question that we always ask ourselves with any investment. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of red flags when it comes to AT&T, as I have previously mentioned. But ultimately, after we did our research, we believe that in the long run, AT&T's value will go up. A quick back of the envelope valuation in 2020, when we first started investing, looked a little something like this. 
they had a forward EPS of around 250 a share and analysts were projecting about a 4% growth rate from there. By growing the 250 EPS by 4% over the next 10 years and applying the historical average multiple of 15, you arrive at a stock price of around $55 by 2030. By discounting this back by 10% return, you get a current value of $22. At the time we started our investment, AT&T was trading well above that price, so we were not able to buy it at fair value, let alone at a discount. We have a low risk tolerance, so if we were going to invest in AT&T, we needed to have a significant margin of safety. When we started our position, we were not expecting some significant growth potential or management to make a move that was going to unlock some hidden value. We didn't know if in the short run AT&T was going to go up a little or down a little, but we were fairly certain that it wasn't going anywhere very fast. We also knew that AT&T paid a sizable dividend at the time, which was hovering between 6 and 7%. And this is what was going to give us the opportunity that we needed to deploy the tools that I have shared with you earlier in the video in order to reduce our cost basis and get the margin of safety that we were looking for. By selling options and collecting dividends on AT&T, we were able to lower the risk of the investment, make the investment more asymmetric, and get our hard-earned cash off the table and back into our pockets. This is an idea that we learned from famed value investor Monish Pabrai, who says, heads I win, tails I don't lose much, and discusses the idea of making a free lottery ticket. Or in other words, the upside outweighs the downside. The reduction of our cost basis combined with the fact that our AT&T investment comprises a small percentage of our overall investment portfolio allows us to have the confidence in what we are doing with this investment. Okay, so I have told you about our initial investment thesis and shared the trades that we made in order to build our position. In summary, we knew that if we could use options and dividends in order to lower our cost basis, we could build a position that we felt comfortable with taking into consideration the company's potential downside. So how does last month's news regarding the spin-off of Warner Media and subsequent merger with Discovery impact our investment thesis? First, let's look at the details of the spin-off and subsequent merger. The deal is planned to be completed in mid-2022, and when it's all said and done, AT&T shareholders will hold a 71% stake in the new company, which will be named Warner Brothers Discovery, and Discovery shareholders will control the remaining 29% stake. In exchange for Warner Media, Discovery will pay $43 billion to AT&T, and in a combination of cash, debt securities, or transfer of debt from AT&T to Warner Brothers Discovery. Now the aspect of this news that has upset many of AT&T's current shareholders is that management plans to use this deal as an opportunity to reduce the dividend. And this is going to remove AT&T from the dividend aristocrats list. AT&T's management has laid out the changes to the dividend payout calculation after the deal has gone through. They are looking to pay out 40 to 43% of the company's cash flow, which is projected to be around $20 billion. So this means that the current dividend equaling 15 billion will be nearly half to 8.3 billion. From a per share perspective, this is taking the current dividend of $2.08 to around $1.16 per share. And this has led to a sell-off of the stock because many people were only owning it for the sole purpose of getting that dividend. So how do we view this deal? Ultimately, we view it as being very positive because when it's all said and done, AT&T will be able to focus on their core business. With the $43 billion and the increase in retained earnings after the dividend cut, AT&T will be able to pay down a substantial portion of its debt as well as invest back into the business by expanding its 5G network across the U.S. The reduction in debt will also bring AT&T more in line with its competitors' debt levels, and ideally this will bring AT&T's current P.E. of 9 up to Verizon's P.E. of 11.5. The investment back into the business should also provide a higher growth potential. Warner Brothers Discovery should also benefit from this deal because once they merge, they will have a content library that can rival key competitors like Disney and Netflix. 
Their overall annual spend on new content will be higher than Netflix, and because Warner Media and Discovery produce very different types of content, they will be able to reach a wider range of audience than other streaming services. Warner Media will benefit from Discovery's worldwide distribution, which will push their content out to an audience further afield. Spinning off Warner Media should also unlock value to AT&T shareholders as the media business's value was hidden within the AT&T conglomerate. By spinning it off, it becomes more easily comparable to its direct competitors like Disney and Netflix, who are trading at much higher multiples, 134 and 50 respectively. For anyone looking to learn more about investing in spinoffs, we would recommend You Can Be a Stock Market Genius by Joel Greenblatt. It's not the best title in the world, but it has some great information about understanding how to unlock the hidden potential in investing in spinoffs. So in summary, we believe that the spinoff and merger offer the potential for revenue growth, increased profitability, and significant multiple expansion. The concerns are still there. Debt, competition, and a management team that has a history of poor capital allocation. But after this deal, both companies are going to be better positioned to pay down their debt, take on their competitors, and really focus their business on the strengths of their respective management teams. So all this combined with our reduced cost basis gives us confidence in our investment, for now. Now looking at the potential valuations of the combination of AT&T and Warner Brothers Discovery, we are using future guidance of the profitability of both businesses and applying multiples more in line with their competitors. And we see the potential upside with both. Without being overly optimistic, we could see the potential value of both companies being at around $40 a share in the next couple of years. And there's still a year between now and when the spin-off merger is going to take into effect. So we still expect to receive the $2.08 worth of dividends over the next 12 months, which is an 11.3% yield on our reduced basis. And even after the spin-off merger, the expected $1.16 dividend will be a 6.3% yield on our reduced basis. With each dividend payment, we are able to pull some of our money off the table, further reducing our cost basis. In conclusion, the key takeaways for this video are when the market is overvalued, it isn't easy to find amazing companies that are trading at a discount to their intrinsic value. If you want to invest during times like these, you have to use a variety of tools in order to mitigate your risk. AT&T is not an ideal investment for us, but by using a combination of options, trades, and dividends, we were able to reduce our cost basis enough that we feel confident in our investment. We are not recommending that you buy AT&T, but instead hope that you can use the information in this video to help you make your own investing decisions that are right for you. Chris and I are not financial advisors. The purpose of this video is for entertainment and sharing an example with information that we hope you find useful. Everyone's financial situation is different and you need to be responsible for making the right decisions for you. All right, that's it for me. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, we would be super grateful if you could let us know by hitting that like button or better yet, subscribing to our channel. As always, we welcome your feedback in the comments and we would be keen to know other topics that you would be interested to see in future videos. Remember, earn more, spend less, and invest the rest, and we'll see you next time.